Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 25 of Genesis chapter 19 and we're beginning to read in verse 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, Jehovah being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O, oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. And behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. O, oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. I'll stop reading there. Now, um, in our last study... We saw that God, in the form of these two men, the angels or messengers, was merciful to Lot, his wife, and his two daughters in bringing them forth without the city. And, and uh, this was a merciful act because the city was soon to be destroyed. And, and so God was delivering Lot, and, and these other members of his family from the coming destruction. And, and so um, we, we uh, were looking at the word without. The word without, which is Strong's number in the Hebrew, 2351. And uh, by the way, it's also the word translated abroad in verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that is, without the city. And we saw that this word is used in relationship to a bullock being burned without the camp, and you'll find that uh, regarding some other uh, sacrifices as, as they were to be disposed of without the camp. And then we went to the New Testament, and we saw that when Satan is loosed, and we read about that in Revelation 20, that Gog and Magog gather together their forces to battle and come against the camp of the saints and, uh, the, the, and the beloved city, which is Jerusalem, um, identified there as both a camp and a beloved city. And then we turn to Hebrews 13, and we we saw that, that it says in verse 11, For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. And that would be uh, outside the gate of Jerusalem without the city. Let us go forth, therefore unto him, without the camp, bearing his reproach. And that's where we, we finished our last study. And, and um, I, we, we were thinking about this. We realized the camp, according to Revelation 20 and also some other places, can be uh, tied to the church. And here God is speaking to the people of God, the elect children, and he says, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. Could we uh, go forth unto Christ without the camp, the church, during the church age? During the 1955 years of the church age? 
Well, no. No, the, no one uh, should have left the church while the church age was still in effect. That's where God wanted his people to be. So that was not the time to go forth without the camp. But here it does speak uh, of uh, a, a time. It, it speaks of a command of God in which we are to go forth to Christ without the camp bearing his reproach. And we know the reproach of Christ is the word of God, the Bible. And you see what God has in mind here is at the time of the end, he will unseal the scriptures and open up information that will include the end of the church age. It, it will reveal God's judgment is on the churches and congregations that um, the Spirit of God has has departed out of the midst of the, the church entire. And it will also reveal a command that will be activated at that point in time after the church age. And, and that's also the time when Satan is loosed. And, and God will activate the command to part out, flee to the mountain. That's the time to come out of the church. Let us, therefore, at that time in history, uh, uh, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. And notice what it says in the next verse, verse 14. For here... Have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come? You see how God is uh, emphasizing that that uh, really uh, it, this is um, uh, in accord, or or it, it is accompanying the previous statement. At the time we are to go forth without the camp that has leave the church, God is comforting us by stating we have no continuing city here. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And, and that has to do with what I was mentioning last time. God's elect are members, were citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, the eternal city of God. We are um, uh, in Christ, uh, in, in the heavenly, seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and therefore, uh, when it comes to this life and this world, uh, we, we were um, involved with God's people, were to be part of the corporate church, earthly Jerusalem, for a time, for a time, but but again, that's uh, that's only a representation of the the eternal reality or the spiritual reality. It only pictures the kingdom of God. It was it was a representation of the kingdom of God, and therefore, it was not a continuing city, as uh, the Lord makes reference to this idea of two cities in Zechariah 14. In Zechariah 14, it says in, um, in verse 1, Behold, the day of Jehovah cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. That's earthly Jerusalem uh, typifying the corporate church. It's taken. Satan has overcome the camp of the saints. Satan has taken his seat, ruling uh, in the churches and congregations of the world as the man of sin. All right, so that city ceases to <clears throat> continue. We have no continuing city because it's taken. And the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue, that would be the remnant, of the people shall not be cut off 
from the city. Now, the city was just taken. And we know uh, when we, we read the Bible's language of, of uh, the Babylonians taking the city Jerusalem and all were to go into captivity and so forth, that none were to remain behind. Yet this tells us the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Here on earth we have no continuing city. But there is a city, there is a city, and that's, that's what it said uh, a little earlier in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews 11, in um, verse, uh, verse 10, uh, this is speaking of Abraham, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That, that is the eternal city that we would, would read about in uh, the book of Revelation coming down from heaven as a bride. It, it is uh, all those that were saved are part of that heavenly Jerusalem. And that's the city we're not cut off from. That's the city that we have our citizenship uh, a, a part of. And, and it, it's not the earthly. It's not the earthly. And uh, another place this is in view is in 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Um, or, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians 5. Which would lead in to the statement that we must all appear before the judgment seat of God, and that is all the elect. But this chapter begins in verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, and, and the earthly house is just like the earthly city. It, it's the, the house of God. Where did judgment begin? At the house of God. It's the churches. The corporate church. And, and so this is beginning by speaking um, figuratively, figuratively of the corporate church. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we know it's the church in view because the, the Greek word translated dissolved is the identical Greek word in Matthew 24 where not one stone shall be left upon another that is not thrown down. It's uh, the here it's translated dissolved, but in Matthew 24, the same Greek word is translated thrown down, referring to the stones of the temple. And so it, we know if our earthly house of this tabernacle were thrown down, that is, time has come for that judgment to commence. The, the final judgment of God gets underway by starting uh, with the city called by His name, as it says in Jeremiah 25. And the church age is, is um, over and done with. The, the whole structure is destroyed. You cannot continue as part of the church. There is not a faithful congregation anywhere in the world because God has left the, the midst of all churches and without the Spirit of God within. I don't care what the pastor teaches. I don't care um, even if they had confessions and creeds that were perfectly faithful. It, it doesn't matter. Christ in the midst of the church is what made the church faithful. Christ departed out of the midst of the church immediately turns it into a harlot, into an apostate body. And, and that's what God did. And, and so here again, 2 Corinthians 5, 1, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. You see, that's just like Zechariah 14, two cities. One city's taken, but the remnant is not cut off from the other city. One city, one house is thrown down, but we have 
um, another house that's not made with hands that's eternal. And you see, this is our confidence. This is our assurance, our, our uh, guarantee of spiritual safety that allowed us to check out the scriptures like a Berean uh, as we, we heard the information as the Lord opened up the eyes of Mr. Camping. And, and really, it was, it was God's doing, uh, uh, feeding Mr. Camping and, and giving him that information, opening up his spiritual eyes so that he could see these things at the proper time and season, and then giving uh, Mr. Camping um, the platform of Family Radio to broadcast it worldwide in order to declare to the churches and congregations their time was over. That's it. God has come to visit. He has found the high places. He has found their uh, erroneous doctrines and teachings and gospels. And he has destroyed it. And, and so we, we saw that study. There's a wonderful book, uh, The End of the Church Age and After. And, uh, and, and we're living in the after part. But the end of the church age and after that, that Mr. Camping wrote that lays it all out. Just hundreds of Bible verses that, that all uh, tie together in a cohesive way, showing that the church age is over, showing that it is God's commandment that we must leave the church. Well, God's people uh, heard these things. They, they may, may have been um, part of a church, member of a church, regular attender, and, and you know, uh, uh, we, we enjoyed our time in the churches. It was a place to gather. It was a place that we could go and, and listen to the Word of God. But now we were hearing reports from the Bible, from the Bible that, that was indicating Time to leave. Time to leave. And God's people hear the voice of Christ. And, and when we check things out and search the scriptures, and we see it's so, well, then the, the people of God are given a heart to obey, a heart to believe the scripture, to believe that voice they hear, and to act upon it, because God's Spirit is within them, moving them to will and to do of His good pleasure. And therefore, we came out. We came out of the church. We left the church. Just like God has been merciful to Lot and his, uh, uh, me some members of his family, and took him by the hand and brought him without the city Sodom. He brought God brought him out. God brought all of his people, all of his righteous elect, out of the church. And he's placed us without. And, 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 and so, uh, you know, to think, to think even for a second about going back it is despising his grace. It's despising his mercy. It's despising the abundance of revelation that he has opened up to reveal uh, these things to our uh, understanding, to, to show them to us, and, and now uh, to go back. Why? Because someone has proven all those many hundreds of Bible verses incorrect. Someone has done an in-depth study on point after point after point, and shows how that's not the case, how it was all wrong and misunderstood? No. No, you won't find anybody doing that. You'll, you'll find someone somewhere maybe finding a single verse and isolating it and not even bothering to address the, the uh, again, um, a multitude of other scriptures. They, they, they don't go uh, to all the other uh, Bible 
verses that, that declare we're to leave the church or the church age is over that were so harmonious. No, they, they find a verse and, and they make some statement. Oh, it's been so many years and we were wrong about May 21, 2011, they think. And therefore, we must have been wrong about the end of the church age. And it's really one error after another error. And the truth that they seem to have is being taken from them and, and verse by verse, verse by verse, doctrine by doctrine. And, and it's because they failed to follow through as God brought us to the point of Judgment Day, May 21, 2011, and, and then it was a shocker, admittedly, that things did not happen as we thought they would with a an outward earthquake and a very visible judgment day. Yet, instead of staying in the Bible, instead of continuing to search the Scriptures to see what is going on, what, what is God doing, they allowed their physical eyes to dictate their next move. They allowed their natural mind to... Um, to reason and to say, well, now uh, it did not happen, therefore it was all wrong. And, and, and so, you know, just like a thread of a garment and, and you pull the thread and that leads to unraveling the whole garment. Well, they made a big mistake by not just waiting on the Lord, continuing to pray for wisdom and guidance and, and look to see now, the Bible, here's what they should have looked to see. The Bible's locked in a particular day, May 21, 2011. And, and I, I, let me study, let me see if we made a mistake and an error with that. No, I can't find anything. And I, and I did try to find myself, and I'm, and I'm sure many others have. Where did we go wrong, this going back years, when apparently we were mistaken? when things did not happen as, as previously understood. And, and yet the more we check the Bible, the more we search the Scriptures, it, it was in place. And in fact, you found, if anyone who did this, uh, would have found additional confirmation that it was Judgment Day, that it was all in accord with the Word of God. It, it just didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. Then why? Did it happen that way? Why wasn't there a worldwide earthquake? But then we kept reading and studying the Bible in order to answer the question. Because now, at that point, you come to realize, well, all right, the Bible says it was Judgment Day. The Bible is not relenting. It is not um, pulling back. The Bible is not turning back from that declaration the thing that God had broadcast to all the world. Well, if the Bible insists, and it did, that it's Judgment Day, how could that be possible? It would have to be a spiritual judgment, wouldn't it? Yes, but does the Bible teach a spiritual judgment? And then when you, you start at that point, you realize, well, in a tremendous way, the Bible teaches a spiritual judgment. Back in the Garden of Eden, when God said, in the day you eat thereof, you will die. And then Adam and Eve ate, and they did not die physically. You know, it was never pointed out to them or to any reader of the Bible that in the day you eat thereof, you'll die in your soul, you'll die spiritually, you'll die invisibly. Nobody ever said that. God never said that in Genesis. But you see, it's, it's understood as we then read the rest of the Bible, we realize, well, he didn't die physically because he lived to be 930. He, and, and yet the Bible speaks in Ezekiel 18. In the day you eat there, or um, uh, you're, you'll die in your soul. It, 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 it says that in Ephesians 2. Dead in trespasses and sins. A spiritual death. That's why the Bible speaks of being born again in your soul. Because you're dead in your soul, and then God restores your soul. So the very first judgment, and this is a major judgment, was spiritual, and it came upon man without 
um, declaration, without warning, without God uh, telling everyone. Now, what I mean when I say in a day you eat thereof is you'll die in your soul. He didn't say that. He just said you'll die. Just like the Bible declares that judgment day, mankind would die. And, and it'll be judgment day. And God wasn't specific. You know, does God have to be specific? No. He's under no obligation to be specific. And, and as a matter of fact, he, he, it, it's his characteristic in the Bible not to be specific in, in practically everywhere because he hides truth and he then encourages us to seek it as buried treasure, to search the scriptures, to find the parabolic, the hidden meaning of what he has said. And so we see the spiritual judgment at the very beginning of the Bible. The spiritual judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane as he is, is praying that the cup of the wrath of God might pass from him. And you can't see a thing. If you were an outward um, uh, visitor or, or an outward observer looking upon Christ in the garden praying, you would not see the wrath of, of God hanging above him. It was a spiritual judgment. Likewise, the judgment on the churches and congregations, a spiritual judgment. Now, please tell me, uh, here we have the judgment of mankind in the Garden of Eden, the judgment of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, the judgment of the corporate church, which is God's outward representation. Uh, try and, and find, tell me where you can find in the Bible judgments that are bigger that are more major, th that are not spiritual. Where, where do you find these major judgments in the Bible that are not spiritual? Well, you can find some historical judgment upon Israel, upon Judah, but they're not m more major than the judgment on the corporate church that numbered almost two billion people. And, and you see the, the biggest judgments in the Bible have all been spiritual. And it was our error. It, it was one of the last things God held back from us in order to set up the trap or the snare of Judgment Day the way He did. He kept back from our understanding that the final judgment of mankind would also be spiritual. But now, again, you see, God locks in the date. He doesn't budge. He won't move off of it in the slightest bit. And here we are searching the Bible and, and, and we are faced with that insistence from the Bible that it was the day of judgment forcing us to understand it spiritually. Well, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have to uh, pick up with our study in the book of Genesis and and all these very interesting things that uh, it gets us into when we get together next time.